Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 51? And we are going to be looking at verse 20. We are in a war conference. It's a war conference. And victory is certain. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations and with thee will I destroy the kingdoms. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I want to speak on the subject, the making of the battle axe. How is the battle axe made? How is the battle axe constructed? That will give us a clue as to how to position ourselves to be weapons in this end time. The making of the battle axe. First and foremost, the battle axe is first an axe. So what is the making of an axe? Now there are two components of the axe. The first is the axe handle. And the second is the axe head. The axe handle. And the second is the axe head. The axe handle is made from wood. And the axe head is made from metal, from iron. Coincidentally, both of them are the products of the earth. One is from the surface of the earth the outer portion of the earth and the other is from the inner part of the earth the axe handle is the product of wood wood is the product of tree which is found in the outer earth the axe head is the product of metal of iron which is located in the inner earth. Both of them are the products of the earth. One is from the outer earth and the other is from the inner earth. Am I communicating so far? So we have wood from the outer earth and we have iron from the outer earth, inner earth. The wood is made into the axe handle and the iron is made into the axe head. The two must combine to form the axe. Or this is where the matter lies. The availability of wood does not automatically produce an axe. You don't carry wood and iron and automatically an ass is produced. The wood must be processed. And the iron must be processed before they can come together and become an axe. When you get a big chunk of wood it has to be chiseled. Chiseled into, into a comfortable shape that the axe owner can handle. When you get the metal, it has to pass through the fire where it is panel beaten into shape. After that, the two can come together and become an axe. 
And when that axe is used in battle, it, it becomes a battle axe. Are we following the equation so far? So the, the two of them are products of the earth. One is the outer earth and the other one is the inner earth. Now, God made man from the dust of the earth. So, God has to do something with the outer earth of man and the inner earth of man to make him an axe. From the outer part of the earth, he does something. From the inner part of the earth, he does something. Then axe is produced. The outer part of the earth is the flesh. The inner part of the earth is the spirit. So, it, fr from the earth that is called man, God has to chisel the flesh and set the spirit on fire to produce the axe. Now, there are many wood available, but they are not usable. There are many, there are many wood and metal available. Components of several people's lives. They carry the wood and they carry the metal, but they have not been processed for use. It's not every plate in the kitchen you use to serve visitors. This is where the problem lies. This is why many people, many people have not yet been effective in the hands of God as battle axes. The flesh is intact and the spirit is fireless. So they are unable to be used. The flesh is solid. It has not been chiseled. Redundant flesh has not been cut off. The flesh has not been circumcised. What happens to a man when he is born at the age, uh, on the eighth day of life? They remove the redundant flesh that is called the foreskin. That process of circumcision is what turns him into a man. In the same manner, before God can turn a person into a battle axe, there is a chiseling of the outer man and the, infl and the flammatization of the inner man that makes him an axe. Can we take the matter very carefully now? So, let us start with the chiseling of the flesh. This is where the major problem lies. And I would like you to look at your Bibles with me in the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and we are going to be reading verse 19 we are going to look at what God has to chisel has to chisel from the lives of people in order for the wood the outer, outer man to be ready for use for the outer man to be ready for use Galatians chapter 5 and we are here in verse 19 and it says now the works of the flesh the works of the flesh the manifestations of the flesh are manifest and this includes adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath seditions heresies envy murder drunkenness revelings and such like of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God amplified version says 
Now the doings or the practices of the flesh are clear. That is obvious. They are immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill temper, selfishness, dissensions, divisions, party spirit, factions, sects with peculiar opinions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, carousel, and the like. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Is anybody here tonight? This is where, this is where the major problem lies. The wood is available. The metal is available. But they have not been processed. There are things still hanging in the life of ministers. Hanging in the life of lives of men of God hanging in the lives of children of God that makes it impossible for God to use them as weapons in his hands he said before I can use you surrender yourself to me let me chisel you and the chiseling many times is not comfortable Surrender yourself to me. Let me chisel you. Surrender yourself to me. Let me remove some things from your life that is preventing me from anointing you the way I should. Surrender yourself to me. Let me remove some character out of your life in order for you to be qualified to be effective. He said the way you are solid like this, I can't handle you. I must chisel you into shape before I can use you. He said the way you are, you, are, you are like this, fireless, I can't use you. I must chisel you and I must pass you through fire in order for you to be usable. That is why not everybody available is usable. Here am I, use me. And God said, I know you are available, but are you usable? Are you ready? Are you ready for me to do something with you? The Bible said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the visions of the Lord. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And there were cherubims of glory flying. With six wings, with two they covered their feet, and two they covered their face. And with two they did fly, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And the pillars of the door moved by the anointing of that worship. We are coming to a time in worship where some things are about to happen. And he moved. Then Isaiah said, I saw it and I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people that are unclean. Oh, what will I do? Then a cherubim flew with live coals from off the altar. Fire coals. And he placed it on his lips. And he said, your iniquities are purged and your sin forgiven. Then he said, I heard a voice that said, whom shall we send and who shall go for us after he has been processed? Then I said, here am I, send me. But the man had been preaching before. In verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, he had been releasing prophecies. But this was the first time he heard the voice of God saying, Who shall we send and who shall go for us? Do you imagine that you are in ministry and God does not recognize that you are there? And he is looking for somebody to send. Because the man had not yet been processed. He had not been purged. Not every wood and iron is an instrument of war in the hands of God. There has to be a processing. The Bible has enumerated so many things. But I am just going to pick some out of it that I consider the most crucial. The first one that is, that is part of the redundant flesh that must be chiseled away is called pride and arrogance. Pride and arrogance. 
is 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 a fleshly activity that must be chiseled away from the life of a minister a man of god before that instrument can be usable in the sight of god beloved there is so much arrogance there is so much boasting there is so much self-exaltation there is so much self-glorification that goes on in the lives of men and ministers of the gospel there is so much self-glorification from the testimonies we see there is so much self-glorification and God said as long as that pride is there as long as that arrogance is there as long as as long as that raising of the shoulder is there I cannot use you is anybody hearing something here today I'd like you to hear me very carefully what was it that led to the fall of Lucifer pride Lucifer lost ministry by pride what was it that drove Nebuchadnezzar into the bush what was it that made Queen Vashti to lose her throne her husband said come she said no what was it what was it what was it that killed Absalom? So much acceptance of praise. So much desire to be praised and desire to be worshipped. That has led us to a lot of desire for, and cravings for titles and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of accolades that are not necessary. It's an unhealthy desire. There are many of us that are angry when we are not recognized. There are many people that will keep malice forever because they feel they are not sitting in the right place. Can I speak to somebody here tonight? And God sees beyond the outside and he sees the heart of people. He said, this little anointing I gave you raised your shoulder. I can't take you beyond where you are because it will kill you. Every single day of your life, my brothers and my sisters, there is a need to go before the presence of the Lord and ask him to check you and check you out if there is any wicked way inside your life. There was a minister of God that was so mightily used of God. Powerfully anointed and used of God. This man is so anointed that if he begins once in a while the anointing of God will come upon him. He begins to dance in the crowd. And as he begins to dance, cripples begin to walk. He, he, he was a specialist in rheumatic cripples. He blasted them out like fire. And this man moved in such a power until one day he was in South Africa ministry. And all of a sudden something entered his head. And he said the whole world is right now under my feet. And there is only one person that can say that. The earth, the heaven is his throne and the earth is what? Just. That was the last crusade he attended. He left there and sat on a wheelchair. He died on a wheelchair. He died on a wheelchair. Rehabonki visited him. He, because he had heard of the man. How much he moved in the power of God. He said when he, he, he came and met the man. He was not able to, to talk to the man straight. Because he, his body was so twisted. He had to kneel down and bend down to look at his face. Go ahead before you fall. And a haughty spirit before destruction. John Alexander Dowie ministered so authoritatively. He had a very powerful beard. And people said, you are the Elijah to come. You are the Elijah to come. You are the Elijah to come. He accepted that praise. And decided to move from Chicago to New York. He chartered a train. And 100,000 people followed him in that train. He went to do what they call the Elijah declaration. To declare himself the Elijah to come. 
the first, the, the, the last apostle from that declaration back to affliction. Those who wrote his biography say it looked like every sickness he casted out returned back to his body. Every demon, every devil he casted, he returned back to his body. I saw his picture reading the Bible from a wheelchair. This is the undoing of many of us in our generation. God helps you a little with a little money and you become too big for the one that lifted you. I'd like you to hear this. I was talking with God's servant bishop here the other day and he told me, he said, you don't only need the ladder to climb, you need it to remain up. That is in case you want to remain there. Pride, arrogance. Don't, don't be addicted to approval. Refuse to be addicted to praise. Refuse to be angry when you are not recognized. Don't struggle to be known. Struggle to know. When you know, you will be known. God has to chisel because he said my glory will I not share with any man. He has to chisel. He has to chisel. He has to chisel you. Chisel you until you are really ready to be a battle axe. I went to a church to preach some time ago. In this place people, people hardly introduced me. Just carry my Bible and come to the altar. For what? Carry my Bible and I come to the altar. I won't even allow you to help me carry the Bible. If you carry the Bible for me, will you carry my mouth? Will you carry the message? In this church, I was invited. Somebody stood on the altar and began to talk. I want to call up a man of God. I want to call up this man that God has used to change my life. By the time he was talking, I thought it was God he was talking about. Frankly speaking, the way he was talking about the man, I thought it was God he was talking about. When he finished, he said, Invite, uh, can we receive my papa? Can we receive my papa in the Lord? Can we receive my daddy? I sank on my chair. I said, People are talking about you like this. You accepted it? That was what Herod did. God sent an angel to slap him, he was consumed as worms on the spot. I sank in my chair. The man collected the microphone and, 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 and obviously it is normal. By the time he finishes, he's now inviting me to come and preach. Frankly speaking, the anointing died. Where I sat, no move, no move, nothing. No flow. I came to that altar with weakness and trembling with the microphone. I had to sing and sing and sing for about 30 minutes just to worship and worship and just try to sing and all of this. I begged God and I asked for mercy and the mercy of God came. Then the service was very wonderful. At the end, I told the man in the hotel what they were telling you you accepted. Did you accept to be called like that? He got angry. That was my last time to be there. I have never been there. And I can tell you that the history of that place is not, it's not, it's not something to write home about. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God. Mortal man. You are the Lord. That is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God.
when you over celebrate yourself God may withdraw his help so you can see your nakedness without God when you think your money is your making your prosperity is your making the anointing you carry is your making God will withdraw from you a little so you can see how naked you are without God Benihin said one day he went before God to pray and he asked God he said please don't take your anointing from me it is it is, it's all I have and God told him don't ask me not to take it ask me to return it because I took it longest time Ooh. he said I took it long. it's not now I took it since what? He said he has continued business as usual. He laid on his face from there when he heard that. He laid on his face for the next two weeks. No food, no water, nothing, nobody. Lord, then what? If you take it, then what will I do with my life? He said, then what, what, is, what, what is left with me? You can take my, we can take wife, take children, take car, take anything you want. But I beg you, Lord, please don't take your anointing. He remembered Samson. When the anointing left Samson, what became of Samson? God gave him mercy. I showed him grace. Redundant flesh pride. We are going for a program. Our officers are doing trafficator, double trafficator. I said, please quench it. I beg you. Now, the truth of the matter is, it is not just humility. That is the reality. I feel absolutely uncomfortable. Absolutely. If they do the trafficator and they be and they do you like um, Jesus entering Jerusalem. By the time you go there and God say, okay, perform. No, perform, perform. See sinners, heal them. See sinners, save them. See unbelievers, heal them. Perform now, perform. I'm waiting for you. Perform. So our protocol officers are aware. Don't make any ostentatious, braggadocious anything. He said, he said, he said, what hast thou that thou hast not received? And if you received it, why do you behave as if you gave yourself? This is what is limiting people. Somebody came to look for me the other day. I went to see him. I, I, I'm just finishing that deliverance service. He sat there in me at the lobby and uh, said the people came from so and so to look for you. I said, you are welcome, sir. He said, hello. You came to look for me. You are a pastor. You are welcome, sir. Happy to see you, sir. Yes, hello. I looked at him. I said, what is wrong here now? We went to my office. Went to my office, sat down. And then, after a while, I said, you are all welcome. Shook hands with all of them. Then he, yes, hello. What is the problem? At the end, he said he's coming to town to hold the program. We should organize it, fix the date, and then invite him to come and preach in the program. That is as God himself. I said, go and come. What is it now? If it is prophetic anointing, how did you get it? If it is apostolic anointing, there are more apostles that have passed beyond you. If you are, if it is, there is somebody who wrote a book. He says the beautiful ones are not yet born. In case you say you are beautiful, you haven't seen beauty yet. In case you say you are anointed, you haven't seen anointing yet. In case you say you are called, you haven't seen calling yet. So, calm down. Calm down. Calm down, my friend. Calm down. Young man, 20, 21 years, 22 years, 23 years. Apostle, prophet. He's running. Elderly people are running after him. 
Your father is calling you Papa. You are not afraid. A person who can burn you say Papa and you agreed. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying here? A person who can burn you say Papa, Papa, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. And you say yes, how are you? Yes, how are you? That guy has no future. He's, he's a short distance runner. He's not a marathon runner. Marathon people don't behave like that. Oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? I have overspent time on this point. But this is one major thing that destroyed the destiny of many pastors and ministers and children of God. They are too proud. Archbishop Duncan Williams said something and somebody quoted and said that there was a man in his church normally begs at the entrance of the church he begs money and that he looked at the man and prophesied within six weeks you shall be a millionaire what? how can this thing be? all of a sudden by the interrelated interconnected supernatural maneuverings he was a millionaire in six weeks and then after a while he became too big when they say tight, they say, what is, what is tight? I'm giving too much money in that church. The, man, the matter got to the ears of the man of God. He said, oh, I'm very sorry. You are more comfortable where you are than this level. It took you six weeks to come here. May you return back within the next six weeks. Six weeks exactly by the same mysteries that brought the results, by the same mystery, everything vanished. It was back to square one. Because some people are more comfortable with adversity than prosperity. Look at your neighbor. Say, God needs to chisel some things out of you. What one prayer we need to pray tonight is by the time this message is over, Lord, is there anything in my life that makes me unusable? Anything you need to chisel, go ahead, chisel it. Anything you need to chisel out of my life, go ahead, chisel it out. The second thing I want to talk about is called jealousy. Jealousy and competitive tendencies. Competition, jealousy. What our African people call jealousy. Envy. Desire to outdo, undo, and overdo others. Desire to deshine others. A dear brother of ours was telling me the other day, Brother Sam, he said that a particular place where he used to go to preach, all of a sudden, some people got jealous. Include, I don't know whether it is the host of the meeting and other people got jealous that when he comes to minister, he deshines others. Deshine. That's the word, deshine. Can you imagine? Are we now in competition? What is the competition between the physics teacher and the chemistry teacher? What is the competition between the doctor and the lawyer? Fulfilling different assignments. The sky is too wide for any star to block the shining of another star. The forest is too thick for two elephants to jump. The sky is too wide for two birds to fly and collide. I don't fulfill my destiny at the expense of your destiny. Jealousy. Competition. You build a big church, I build a big church. You, you bought a car, I bought a car. You, 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 you travel abroad, I travel abroad. You see, there are some people, whenever you tell them a testimony, Say praise the Lord. Last week God added a, a thousand people to our church, new members. 
instead of him to settle down and say, wow, is God not awesome? Congratulations. But what exactly, how did you do it? What did you do? What did you pray? What, what did you do before then? He will never say so. He will automatically bring up something that will be equivalent to what you shared. Or he will tell you also about two weeks ago we bought ten lands. Uh, including those that are true and are not true. And we bought ten lands and, 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 and in fact we have ten branches in the city. If you put all our ten lands together we may be up to fifty now. If you say something he has to say something. He cannot stand for you to succeed. If you cannot stand the success of another person you have no future. If you cannot stand the victory that is somebody is succeeding and you are not happy, it doesn't excite you. You have no destiny in God. It has to be chiseled away. Chiseled away. Your friend told you that she has found somebody to marry. Why wouldn't you smile a little? Automatically you begin to think of yourself. Why should she leave me behind? Eh, it is well. Which kind, which kind of man be that? Eh, what, what did he study? Did he, did he go to university? Where is he working? Mm -hmm. Such a man? Well, for me, for me, I know that um, if I have to wait for the right person, I'll wait to. That thing is what is preventing that girl, that sister from getting the right person and even if she gets the right person it's going to affect her home because that petty spirit must be dealt with before God can use you. I'm telling you what I'm talking about. When was the last time you contributed to the success of another person? You actually contributed to the success of another person. You are, you are actually happy that somebody is doing something great and you went there to identify. One man said when he was in office the kind of Christmas cards he received was awesome. Just before Christmas they removed them. That Christmas the kinds of Christmas cards that came miserable if any came. Envy, competitive jealousy. That was what killed the healing revival. 1945 to 1947. 1947 to 1959. Competition entered. I'm talking of the revival of, of, of the, the, the people like A.A. Allen, Jaco, William Branham, and many of those people. Men at the point, your tent is 10,000 seat auditorium then I will make my own 10,200. The point is, I have the largest tent in, the, in town. And after a while, the Spirit of God took off. I am not a part of this competition. Nobody knows you like yourself, apart from God. And you know the kind of animosity that begins to grow when you begin to hear about somebody progressing, especially if that person is your mate. And it looks like you are not moving at the same level. That thing kill it. Channel that bitterness to intercession. And begin to pray for the same man. Ask God to cause him to reach his destiny. For I know if I ask God to make somebody reach his destiny. I have sown a seed for me to reach my own destiny. The wood is available. But it's not usable because it is too solid. So some things need to be chiseled from it. That's the second one. It's called competitive jealousy. The tough thing that God needs to chisel from, from the lives of people is called bitterness and unforgiveness. Mm. Bitterness is an activity of the flesh that must go. How many of you know that 
there are people seated in this church now in all probability that are not in talking terms with each other eh? do you want me can I speak and we are singing anointing follow me let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me anointing fall on me and God the angels of God are singing their own anointing will not fall on you can I take it a step further there are pastors that can't greet each other. That is bomb. That is bomb. Men of God. Men who hold the microphone in the name of God. Who preach the word of God. That if somebody talks to them, they can't answer. There are people when somebody is coming like this, they pretend as if they didn't see the person. They move off. That is solid wood that has not been chiseled. Solid wood is too solid to be used. Hello? What are the matters? It's still my member. What are the matters? He said something about me. I have made up my mind that there is nobody in this world, I say it under God, that will take me to hell by unforgiveness. Nobody. Nobody. I have learned the techniques of dealing with it. Oh, I, 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 I already told you. you. You just look at yourself and see how many times you offended God and he didn't kill you. He said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. Is there somebody here who have never offended God in his life? Let me see your hand. Is there somebody who has not broken the heart of God? Who has not disappointed God in one way or the other? Even some people offended God today. Some people many times today. And then I also know that if I hold the person in my heart, I am not holding him. I'm holding me. I'm, I'm holding who? I'm holding me. In all probability, he doesn't know that I'm even angry. He doesn't know that I am bitter. He may not even know that, I, that I off he offended me. Is going about his business and I am having sleepless nights. I refuse for any devil to arise me like that. And I pray and intercede for the person. If he means evil against me, that prayer will work against him. If he means good, the prayer will bless him and it becomes a seed for my own life. Unforgiveness. Sars, please every single day of your life go before God and wash your heart. Do you know what you will ask God? Ask him, is there anybody who offended me I have not forgiven? Because the heart of man is very deceitful. He will deceive you that you have forgiven until you hear the man's voice. Uh, the thing will rise again. <laughs> but the demon will come back. Until you hear the man's voice on the phone or on anywhere. You see his picture. Somebody mention his name. You know the man? You know him? Okay. okay. It is well. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I am available. Chisel me. Redundant flesh. Excess wood. Remove from my life. Help me to be usable. There are pastors you need to call tonight. Am I communicating to anybody? 
There are pastors you need to call tonight, pastors. There are friends you need to call tonight. There are people you need to phone tonight. The way you look at it may not be the way the other person looks at it. You need to phone tonight. Free yourself and become an instrument in the hands of God. Number four, the number four, the number four uh, thing that must be chiseled from the life of people among so many other things is what I call dishonesty, insincerity. See, insincerity, dishonesty, hypocrisy, double-facedness. You say A and you mean B. Evangelistic stories. Not evangelistic, evangelistic, elastic. Exaggeration. So terrible. So terrible. A thing is not a lie because of what was said. It is a lie because of what was implied. Hello? <laughs> it's not a lie because of the statement. It is a lie because of the state of what the statement was meant to imply. Somebody say eat. Say I'm not eating. I, I, I don't want to eat now. Say are you fasting? You say. <laughs> No, no worry, no, no, no challenge, I'm not eating now. now. Now you are not fasting. But that reaction implied that you don't want to say you are fasting. He said, eat. You say, I'm not eating. You say, are you fasting? He said, don't, just, just don't worry, I'm not eating. Now you are not fasting. Did you get but, but what you said was to leave the man with the impression that you are fasting. So you lied. Oh. A thing is not a lie because of what was said, but because of what was implied. It was... Abraham Lincoln that said, anybody who can flatter can slander. The one who said, you are the only, oh, I have never seen a man like you. He can also slander. We have to watch ourselves. The spirit of God is the spirit of truth. Somebody say amen. It has to be chiseled. That you stand in absolute honesty, absolute sincerity. Pastor, don't share a testimony and give details that are not correct. God is watching. You can't make God more omnipotent with your lies. Don't give an illustration that is not real. I am telling you, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says a little leaven leavened the whole lump. There is a need for something to be done in the church. Let the people know. We are about to do something in the, in the church and I'd like you to plant a seed and the Lord is going to bless you for your seed. Don't come and say, the spirit of the Lord say I should raise a seed. Now, now, that, that, I think I'm, I'm, I'm throwing some bullets now. Say, so people, listen, that is the spirit of the Lord just led me to do something now. We are going to really have to give a gift and this gift is going to produce a miracle within 78 hours. Meanwhile, you know that you, you have a specific agenda in your heart and you put it in that form. An almighty God who weighs actions is weighing you and weighing what you are doing with his precious people. Somebody brings me a form to, to pray for either visa or something. And the age on the form is a lie.
it is an age that was declared the age is a lie the reason for the journey is a lie and you want me to pray on the phone The, the, the last thing I want to mention here is immorality. Because that was the first one that was mentioned on the list. Immorality, impurity, indecency. Immorality. There are various forms of immorality. Sleeping with a, 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 a woman or a man that you have not married is immorality. If it's a married person, it is called adultery. If it is an unmarried person, it is called fornication. There is lesbianism, where women meet with women. There is homosexuality, where men meet with men. There is masturbation, where people play with themselves. And they are not really playing with themselves. By the time they begin to work on themselves, a demon appears to have intercourse with them. Lewdness, pornography, sit on the internet, sit on, vi on video or DVD or whatever. God said, and you want me to use you? It must be chiseled of your life. If somebody has a weakness, trusting God to be delivered from it, the person should own up and be delivered. That matter is a bit milder than the matter of somebody who lives in it and, 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 this, and thinks it deceives God and man. Hello? Can I give you another dimension? Indecency. Amplified version mentioned it. It's part of immorality. You dress like a Jezebel. You may not commit fornication, but somebody can commit fornication on your account. That is, he lusted and lusted and lusted after you, and he knows that he cannot do it with you, so he has to look for somebody to do it with, having been sponsored by your indecency. So you are part of the, 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 the equation. That is himself, yourself, and the person he went to meet. You are all involved. But that is not what that is what we don't want to hear. Amplified version mentioned it. Indecency. Married man, don't play with somebody's wife or somebody's or, 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 or somebody you are not married as if you have married. Don't allow people to touch you in sensitive parts of your body. Hello? How many of you have ever seen people that when you see them, their eyes are full of something? You know and they know that they want to do something. Run away from the man. Run away from the woman. The Lord will help us. But I right now take authority over every immoral devil. I take authority over the spirit of lesbianism. The spirit of homosexuality. I take authority over pornography. I take authority over every wicked spirit of the devil. I curse you tonight in the name of Jesus. Lose your grip. Go! Let me say this. If you enjoy the company of the opposite sex too much, you are beginning to like the company too much. You need help. Before you fall into the bridge. Hello? Is that too hard for somebody to understand tonight? Lift your right hand and say, Lord, I am available. Jesus every excess flesh from my life chisel every excess flesh from my life 
I am available. I am available. In Jesus' name. Let me quickly run through the second component of the axe, which is the axe head. Somebody say axe head. I said that the first one is taken from the, from the outer head. The second one is taken from the inner head. The first one has to be chiseled. The second one has to be passed through fire. That is what God needs to do with you tonight. There is going to be a fire baptism. A fire baptism that will engulf your spirit. It will burn away. It will burn away wrong motives. Wrong motives for desiring the anointing of God. It will burn away callousness. It will burn away everything that is not of God. And it will create in you something. And what are the things that the fire will create in you? I enumerate that very quickly and then we rise up to pray. When God has set your spirit on fire, number one, there is an impartation of passion. 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 You see a man ministry, ministering with passion. You see a man evangelizing with passion. You see a man living a Christian life with passion. It is a product of fire. Passion, zeal, drive is a product of fire. And that is to say that where that passion is lacking, it is not possible to be a battle axe. Number two, there is an impartation of enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. It was Charles Finney that said, Pastor, preacher, if you are not excited about what you are preaching, by all means, get out of the pulpit. Enthusiasm. The fire of God imparts enthusiasm. The man is vibrant, enthusiastic. He is optimistic. He is not pessimistic. It's not, um, I hope so. No. We can take the land. It is possible. Enthusiastic. It is possible. A stranger to discouragement. A stranger to depression. He is too much on fire to be depressed. He is too much on fire to be discouraged. He is enthusiastic. He is, he is aggressive in the spirit because there is a fire that has processed his inner man. Anybody need that fire here tonight? Number three, product of this fire is what I call restlessness. There is a holy restlessness. There is, there, is, there is a restlessness. There is an acceleration that comes upon the man. You cannot be, you cannot be stagnant and be and be and be and be and be and be and, and, and sit and stink. There is a restlessness on your soul. You want to do something for the kingdom. He said. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be witnesses of me. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went and sit down? What? He went about. He went about. He went about. He went about. That is what I am talking about. There is that restlessness. What is it that turns ice block into ice water? The application of heat that makes the water molecules to become restless then they dissolve from the solid solid state into liquid state apply for that heat they become more restless and they escape from the liquid to the gaseous state apply more heat and they become more restless until they get into the nuclear realm when they dissolve into electrons and neutrons and protons The level of fire you carry determines the degree of your restlessness and your acceleration. And the degree of your restlessness and acceleration determines the degree of your impact. Many of us are too normal to change anything. Too normal, too normal, too normal, too lukewarm, too docile, too imbecile, too, too, too harmless. I want to provoke and challenge that pastor. Challenge you as, you as you are going to finish this conference and go back to where you came from. You are going to receive a baptism of a higher degree of restlessness. I 
is going to change your destiny. See, restlessness is an acceleration. You carry speed. People are walking, trying to catch you. Say, no, I, I'm, I'm running somewhere. There is what we call fire steps. It's like a man walking on fire that cannot walk. He has to move with fire steps. Because if he walks, it will burn his legs, so he has to run. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to anybody here today? Fire is a release of restlessness. Number four is spiritual intensity. Somebody says spiritual intensity. Oh, spiritual intensity. The man fasts and prays without advice. The man, the man, the man prays with, with a degree, a degree of intensity that will amaze the devil. There is spiritual intensity. I don't have the prayer and fasting schedule. I used to have in those days. But now I don't know if I have the prayer and fasting schedule. Because it can start at any time. It can start at any time. And, and, and prayer can start at any time in the night. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Huh? I told some people some times ago, I said, the day I look, it looks like I oversleep, that day is in trouble. Because everything must be recovered. You know, there are various levels of intensity. There are some who pray like this. Are you praying in tongues or you are calling somebody? There are those who pray like suya, 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 suya. There are those who pray like mama, 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 mama. It's like calling his mother. There are those who pray like yogurt, 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 yogurt. As if he wants to drink yogurt. There are those who pray like jike toko bagalagaratesiti. There are those who pray like elega bagaraga yaga lagabarada jalala. There are those who pray, Jikaga Babaga Lagaya Garatata. See, they, they, you see, what you don't have inside cannot come out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If your spirit is on fire, your tongue will be on fire. I am tired of preaching that looks like advice. I am tired of preaching that looks like lecture. Even if it is coming as a teaching, even if it is coming principle upon principle, let it come with a force that nothing can resist. How many of you need that fire tonight? I am only trusting God for 21 people with fire tonight. And I know we can see that 21 people tonight. And, and, and if you press in, you will get that fire. Tomorrow is the impartation service, but today fire will still fall. Before tomorrow arrives, fire will fall. Come. Fire will fall before the before if your hands. He has been looking for something. And he's getting it. He's looking for something. He said to God. I need more anointing. God said, pray for my servant for seven days without food and pray for him in tongues for three hours a day. If you are able to do that, I will move you to the level you want to go. He's done that for over seven days. It's not my fault and it's not his fault. On Tuesday, the Lord dragged me to, to pray for him like this. But somehow, I don't know why, it, I, don't know why I, I didn't do it. And then it was that day that I was meant to do it. It was on the seven days fast. And I didn't know. But I was being pulled to pray for him. Somebody will catch it today. Receive. One, two. Receive. Yes. Take it in. Somebody else is receiving it up there. Receive it. Stand on your feet. The counselors on that side. Hold your hands together. 
Hold your hands together at the counselor's side. Hold your hands together. Lift your hands as you hold it together. You need the fire, so receive it. At the count of three. One, two, three. Ifre koko kobaba. Ifre koko kobaba. Eli friti ika kalalaba. Ifre teke se predia. E prediaya. E prediaya. Ifra koko. Ele fredesidia. Eliku aparate e se prada. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Catch it, catch it, catch it. There is something that must erupt here tonight. Something must erupt here tonight. Something is erupting here tonight. For the pastor that traveled all the way from Delta State, you traveled all the way from Enugu State, Ebony State, Benue State. You are not returning back the same. Possible, impossible, impossible. 